Well, good evening, folks. I don't know what time it is. It might be a little early, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started tonight. I'm sorry that we didn't have church in the building tonight, but uh, I'm sure that uh, the roads have uh, some snow and some ice, and uh, hopefully by Sunday we'll be able to be back in there. Uh, we'll see how it goes. Hopefully you're staying warm. And uh, I can see your name coming up on the screen for uh, all you folks that are watching. You can sing these songs along with me. The last time I got so dry, I'm here in this little uh, room of mine, and there's a vent for the furnace right beside me. <laughs> so it makes me pretty dry, but I'll try my best. No need to uh, make excuses, is there? Let's give this one a shot here tonight. I've a home prepared where the saints abide Just over in the glory land And I long to be by my Savior's side Just over in the glory land Just over The happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory land I am on my way to those mansions fair just over in the glory land There to sing God's praise and His glory share Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory land What a joyful thought that my Lord I'll see Just over in the glory land And with kindred saved there forever just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land I'll join the happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty I'll stand just over in the glory land With the blood washed throne I will shout and sing Just over in the glory land Glad hosannas to Christ the Lord and King Just over in the glory land Just over The happy angel band Just over in the glory land Just over in the glory land There with the mighty host I'll stand Just over in the glory All right, I see your names popping up on there. If you weren't on here, I said I'm sitting right by a, a furnace vent. If my wife is watching this, she can turn the heat down for me. But it makes you dry as can be. So hopefully you had a good day today. Um, some of you probably were out working. 
um, doing what you needed to do to take care of things. I don't know if you're like me. Um, ain't nobody throwing money my way, so uh, I had to get out there and do what I do. And um, I enjoy it. I, I appreciate the opportunity to do what I do for a living. Sometimes, of course, you get tired doing anything, but God is good to us. Marianne Newman, happy birthday to you. <laughs> I see you share a birthday with my dad and my brother. I know some other folks that had the same birthday, so happy birthday to you. Um, here we go. Let's try this one. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, now safe am I. This is where you sing. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help. Love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, all my heart to Him I give. Ever to him I'll cling In his blessed presence live Ever his praises sing Love so mighty and so true Merits my soul's best songs Faithful loving service to, to him Belong Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea. Billows his will obey. He your Savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Good evening to those of you that are getting on. I can tell Teresa turned the heat down so it won't dry me out totally. Uh, when I do this from home, I can't really do all that we do there at the church. You'll have to forgive me, but I'm not uh, going to sing you three songs out of the hymn book, lead the service, play the guitar, uh, do the special singing, and all that stuff too. So uh, that takes a little out of you, I guess. I'm going to... Um, there was someone that asked for a song last week, and... 
The names didn't come up real fast, but I failed to see it, and she I don't see her on here tonight, so there's no need to sing it for her. If she gets on here, I'll try to sing it for her, but this song was on my mind today, and it goes with what I'll be reading about here um, tonight. I haven't sang this for years. You know, people struggle with different things in their lives. Um, some folks never have problems with drugs, alcohol, those kind of things. And then you find other people that do. I remember uh, going to a class down at the counseling center years ago and listening to uh, Ed Hughes as he was talking. And he said, um, one of the things that was evident, he said, there could be three people and each one of them could try a drink once and one, it could do nothing for them. And they'd say, nah, I don't really need it. The other one, it could just make them sick. They'd say, I never want that again in my life. And the other one could take it and, and it'd be the best thing ever happened to them. And they just crave it all the time. And, and, uh, I just thought, you know, there are a lot of folks with a lot of problems. Uh, some can relate to this song and maybe some will not be able to, but, uh, the first time I heard it, I thought of all the people that I've known that have struggled with drugs or alcohol and how God can deliver and will deliver them. And like I said, I haven't sang it for years. Should have practiced it, I guess. But here we go again, making excuses, right? All these guitars I've got around here, I've got fat necks and skinny necks, and this capo fits different on them. Let's try this. He stumbled in the front door. He'd never been inside a church. He was looking for some answers. God knows how he searched. Trading in his old life, grace was just a step ahead. When he made it to the altar, he turned to me and said, Friend, I've hit rock bottom, not a nickel to my name. I've thrown away what God gave me And I have only me to blame Every day is a battle When your heart is incomplete Help me get down So tired of running, a man without a home. This world cannot help you when you're empty and alone. He said, I want my family back. I'm tired of living in the streets. Help me get down on my knees so I can get back on my Friend, I've hit rock bottom, not a nickel to my name. I throwed away what God gave me, now I have only me to blame. Every day. When your heart is incomplete, help me get down on my knees so I can get back on my feet. Every day is a battle. When your heart is in. Help me get down on my knees So I can get back on my feet 
one more song here, and then I'll get into the word. Same storyline in this song. Just someone crying out for help. Lord, help me walk another mile, just one more mile. I'm tired of walking by myself. Lord, help me smile another smile, just one more smile. I'm tired, can't make it on my own. I never thought that I needed help before. I thought that I could do things by myself. Now I know just can't take it anymore with a humble heart on bending knees I'm begging you please help me come down from your golden throne to me yes to lonely me I need to feel the touch of your tender hand. Remove the chains of darkness and let me see, Lord, let me see just where I fit in to your master plan. I never thought that I I thought that I could do things by myself. Now I know I just can't take it anymore. With a humble heart on bended knees, I'm begging you, please help me. With a humble heart on bended knees, I'm begging you, please help me. All right, folks, I uh, will go ahead and get into the scripture at this time. I said, um, as I was wishing Miss Mary Ann Newman, a happy birthday. This is my dad's birthday as well, my brother's. Um, and so, uh, happy birthday to my brother if he would watch this. Uh, my dad would have been 74 years old today. And um, I remember as a kid, I'm just singing those two songs and what I'm going to speak on is is help. And, and I uh, thought as I sang the song about the fellow who uh, couldn't lay down the bottle. Um, people have a difficult time with that sometimes. And uh, I thank God that I have been an eyewitness to how God can help people lay down addictions, walk away from those things, and how God can save a man and save his relationship with his family and all through that. So the book of Hebrews tonight, I'm going to read just a little bit to you. I won't keep you long, I'm sure. Hebrews chapter 4, chapter 4 of Hebrews, and I'm going to just read to you verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. I'm going to talk to you tonight about help. <laughs> help. Um, if you've ever been in a situation where you've needed help, and no matter what kind of help it has been, um, you may be like 
Uh, men get accused of this a lot. They say, well, men don't like to ask for help. They don't like to ask for directions. They don't like to ask. They don't like to complain that they're hurting. Uh, you could ask a woman. She'd maybe tell you a little different on that. But uh, each of us have our turning point, our tipping point, something that would cause us maybe to cry out for help. I remember when we were getting ready to move back from Myrtle Beach, from uh, Little River there, uh, we had already resigned the church where we were, and we'd talked to the folks here in the house where we're living about coming back here and and uh, living. And Teresa was working, finishing her job out. Of course, my job, I took a little bit of time off so I could load the truck, but I couldn't load that truck by myself. And it was something that we uh, needed help with. It's a 40-foot truck we're going to be bringing back. We sold just about everything we had when we moved down there. But down there, we bought some new furniture and we had some given to us. So I thought, well, we won't need that big of a truck. Well, surely to goodness we did. And by the time uh, we get to figure and everything that was going to go in it, <laughs> we had to get one of the biggest trucks you could get. And I remember one evening, Teresa came home from work. I had been there trying to load things in the, the vehicle and she came home and we have this massive piece of furniture that was, it's a display case that was given to us. And Teresa and us, both of us, um, <laughs> tried and tried to get that thing to the door and we finally got it to the door and then we got it out on the patio and then we got it into the back of that truck. And if there was ever a time I needed help or she needed help, it was then. Now, that was just physical. It wasn't, but about the next day or so, a couple people from the church, without me even asking, I could have asked, but our church there was kind of like uh, the church where we're at now. Some of the folks were a little older, and I didn't want to uh, spring anybody's back or hurt anybody, so I didn't ask, and Sure enough, uh, there were some folks that came and they just started helping. Well, um, I needed help and I wasn't too stubborn to ask when our son flew down. He helped us load the rest of it. That's just a simple thing, needing help doing something like that. Unless you're getting ready to move and then it's not so simple, right? But there have been other things in my life that I have needed help with. Um, of course, that I could not do myself and I was not afraid to ask God for. And I'm going to share a couple of those things with you tonight. This uh, scripture that we just read, the, the verse before that says, we have not an high priest which cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, but with all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. And then it goes on to say, and I'll read it again, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, mercy and grace, that's what the writer is speaking of. That's what you're going to find when you need help. When you come for mercy and grace, you will find it, he says. Just come boldly to the throne of grace. I was thinking of the people in the New Testament, just in the first two books of the New Testament, some of the people that you find coming to Jesus Christ and asking for help. They were coming asking for grace and they were coming asking for mercy, but they didn't know that's what they were asking for at the time. What they were asking for, number one, first is chapter 15 of the book of Matthew in verse 25. There is a woman that comes to Jesus and she's asking, she asked her uh, Jesus' disciples, uh, and of course they couldn't give the help that she needed, and so she asked uh for Jesus to help her. She has a daughter that is grievously vexed with the devil. Folks, I'm going to say to you today, if you've ever cried out to God for help, if you have children, they will make you cry out to God for help at times. Uh, when, when they're young, there are sicknesses and maybe they can't speak. They can't tell you what the problem is. Maybe there are situations there. But when they get older, sometimes there are things in their life you hate to see them go through hardship. And so on behalf of your child, you may go to God and ask him, for help. And in that situation, in chapter 15 of the book of Matthew, that's what that little woman is doing. She's going to Jesus, asking him for help. She says, I have a daughter uh, who is vexed with the devil. And so 
she is crying out for help. And Jesus says, it's not meat for me to take the, the children's meat and to give it to the dogs. And she said, yes, Lord, but uh, even the dogs would uh, eat from the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And so Jesus says, because of this great faith, he helps her. I'm just talking about help tonight. That's all I'm talking about, help. There may be times where you don't ask God for help. You think that you can do it all your own, all on your own. You can do it by yourself. Men get accused of that. I said a lot, but that happens sometimes with women as well. So somebody said to me once, my husband will not go to the doctor. He will never go to the hospital. I said, yes, he will. She said, you don't know him. I said, I know people. If he hurts bad enough, he will go to a doctor or he will go to a hospital. We don't cry out for help sometimes until it hurts us terribly. Sometimes we're ashamed. Sometimes we, uh, maybe it is a man thing, but sometimes it is the pride. We think we can do something all by ourselves and we don't really need help. And there's a time when we don't fully see the need that we have in our lives. But when we do, isn't it great as the scripture says in Hebrews that we can come boldly before the throne of grace to find that help that we need. It's great that there is a place for us to go. So the first woman that we read about, it was her daughter that brought her to Jesus and said, Lord, her words, Lord, help me. The second person that I'm going to take you to tonight is in the book of Mark in chapter 9 and verse 22. And this man, it's just roles reversed. First it was a mother because she had a daughter that needed help. This time it is a father who has a son. And the scripture says that he, of course, is possessed by devils. He asked the disciples to cast them out. They cannot. Jesus says, what is it that you're talking about? And so he begins to share his story with Jesus. And the thing that gets me is this man says to Christ, but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. I can't tell you the times that I have laid in my bed at night concerned. I know there are people watching this tonight that would chastise me if I said to you I was worried because they'll say, well, worrying is a sin. I understand that. But as a father, I can't tell you the times that I have laid and been overly concerned about my daughter and about my son and about their lives and about the help that they may need. They didn't come to me at all and ask me for help. They weren't asking me for help. But I found myself as a father going to God and saying, Lord, please, if you can do anything, and I know you can, please help us. And that's what this gentleman did here. As he came to Jesus, he said, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And then in verse 24 of chapter 9, Jesus said, all things are possible to he that believeth. And this man's words still ring in our hearts and our ears today. Help thou mine unbelief. He said, Lord, I believe. And probably most of us on here tonight could say the same thing. Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. And so there was this part of this man that was being honest, being sincere. He needed help. This was something for his son that he could not do. And that woman in Matthew, that was something for her daughter that she could not do. She could not heal her. She could not cast out the devil. She could not free her. That's when it becomes of us to come to God and say, Lord, I need help. I said, if I could have loaded that moving truck when we were coming back from Myrtle Beach, if I could have done it all myself, I wouldn't have needed help. But I couldn't do it all by myself. I needed help, and I had to ask for that help. There are some things in this life that you can't do by yourself. Some things that, that I will never know how I would handle them unless I would ever face them. I have to tell you, there has been a time that I've wondered how in the world could a person feel like there was no way out no escape. 
How could they feel that way? How could they go through that? There have been times in my life that Satan has tempted me and tried me and tested me and tried to push me to that limit to feel like there was no one that loved me, no one that cared, no one that ever gave a thought or a concern for me. I know that's not the case, but he will try to make you feel that way. During that time, it could have been easily conveyed to me by Satan that no one cares for you. Why are you still here? No one cares for you. Why do you even care for yourself? But I found that I needed to cry out to God for help. Sometimes I do that in a, a group of people. I, I've had people come for revival before. I remember a pastor came and preached a revival at the church I was pastoring. and It wouldn't have mattered if there was 10 people or 1,000 people in that building. It seemed like the only person he preached to was me. And if I wouldn't have cried out to God for help, I don't believe he would have helped me. But that night I did. I said, God, here I am, a pastor of a church. I need help. I'm sorry I haven't come to you and asked you, but I need it. Tonight, maybe you find yourself there. Maybe it's you who needs help. Maybe it's you who needs help because you're concerned or overly concerned or worried about things. I shared with you about my children. I believe these uh, people that we read about in Matthew and in Mark, both of them, the woman comes for her daughter, the man comes for his son. They both are concerned for their loved one. The best place to take it is to the Lord. When you need help, I could give you my phone number. You could text me. You could call me. We can put it on the prayer chain. We can put it on the internet. Everybody pray for so-and-so. But the best place you can go is to the Lord. You know that song, Where Could I Go? Where Could I Go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend. Some say to help me in the end. I say to save me in the end. Needing a friend. Where could I go but to the Lord? He is the one that can give us help. And so we may obtain help in time of need. <laughs> well, if it wasn't a time of need, I probably wouldn't have needed help, right? But when it became aware to me that there was a need, then I began to cry out to God for help. Maybe you have a need tonight. Maybe if there is something in your life that you need help with, maybe it is physical, Maybe it is spiritual. Uh, whatever it is tonight, as we pray, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you, you pray for yourself. You cry out to God for help. Listen to the words again of this little woman as she talks to Jesus about her daughter. She says, Lord, help me. Listen to the words again of the man who cries out for his son. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. That's what I'm saying tonight. Only you know if you're truly in need. And if you are, I'm asking you tonight to cry out to God for help. Lord, as we come to you tonight, God, I'm thankful for those folks that have joined us tonight. And God, I pray that you would watch over and bless, Lord. You know the hearts of the individuals that are watching this. Some folks who may never attend our church may never be able to come to our church, but God, they're here tonight, and I pray that you would bless them and encourage them, give them the help and strength they have need of, Lord, and help them to understand that if they will cry out to you, you will hear them, and God, you will give them the help that they have need of, Lord. We're thankful for all you do for us, God. We, we love you. Thankful for the folks, that, although we couldn't make it to our church tonight for service. Thankful for the folks that are here. And God, I pray that you would bless us uh, until we're able to make it back there again. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, folks, for joining me tonight. Um, I pray you have a great night. If you watch the devotion in the morning, uh, as far as I know, unless the Lord takes me home, I'll be right here. So um, God bless you and have a great evening. Bye.